All right, guys, so today we started talking about different kinds of linear equations. We started talking about equations that might result in never having a solution, so, or no solution, or having infinitely many solutions. Everything we've been practicing up until now has been a one solution, and we're going to look at the cases where a situation might result in no solutions, not being able to make a true statement, or infinitely many solutions, which would mean every number you plug in or substitute in for your variable will give you a true statement. Let's start with the basic uh, that we've been practicing. Uh, here's a one solution case. Uh, some things to notice. We have different variables on both sides of the equation. That is going to be one of a good hint that we have something that's one solution when we have different variables uh, on both sides of the equation. But let's solve this and see what we end up getting. Uh, we would start by um, looking to see if we need to distribute. And so I'm starting with uh, thinking about distribute. And in this case, there's nothing to do there. I'm going to look to see if I have to collect like terms. And in this case, I don't. So now I'm going to work with my variables and I'm going to get them on one side. So I do have to do that. I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. And I'm doing the subtracting of 5x because that will give me a positive result. 6 minus 5 is 1, so we have an x plus 3 equals a 7. And then we will get our constants uh, to a 0, and 3 minus 3 is 0. So we have x equals 7 minus 3 is 4. So this is a case of one solution because we have our unknown x equaling a single value. So the way I can kind of do this in a general sense is to say that if we have one solution, we're going to have our x equal a single number. For example, like maybe x equals 2. There's a number that our x is going to equal. And so that's what we've got. I'm using an a here for the generic sense, and down here I've written a can be a number. One of the key things we noted was that we had a different number of variables on both sides. On one side we had a 6, on the other side we had 5. Now let's look at a case of no solutions. So something I want to look at right away is we've got the same number of variables on both sides but we have different constants. We have a 3 over here and we have a 5 on the other side. So let's see what happens here in this case. We're going to start the same way. I'm going to look to see if I have to distribute. Uh, and in this case, I do not. I'm going to look to see if I have to collect like terms. I do not. So now I'm going to work on getting the variable on one side. So uh, let's see. Let's start by subtracting 6x from both sides, minus 6x from both sides. When we do that, 6 minus 6 is 0, so we're left with 3. And on the other side, 6 minus 6 is 0, so we're left with 5. So now we're left with this weird statement that is not true. This is a contradiction because we cannot... That's messy, sorry about that. We cannot have, it's not true that 3 is the same as 5. So that's a contradiction. This can't happen. So there must be no number that we can plug in that would give us a true statement. And if we look back at the original, excuse me, so when I look here, I'm noticing that if I take any number and plug it in for x, that on one side I have going to get times 6 to that number, and on the other side I'm going to multiply it by 6. So we're going to have the same number on both sides. But then this side's only going to add 3 to it, whereas this side will add 5. So whatever happens, I'm always going to end up with this side having 2 more, right? Because 5 minus 3 is 2. So that's where we're getting that 2 more from. So no matter what happens, this side is always going to have 2 more to it. So no matter what's plugged in, we're going to 
get different values on each side of the equation. And that's what's resulting in the no solution. What happens is one of the key signs is that when we try to solve it, we get different numbers on both sides of the equal sign. And one of the key factors we saw to start with is that when we had our simplified expressions on both sides, we had the same number of variables, but different constants. So that's a no solution type of equation. Let's look at the infinitely many solutions. And again, let's start by looking at some structure, see if we can find some clues here. One of the things I know is that we've got six uh, x's and six x's. So we have the same number of variables on both sides. We also have the same number of constants. It turns out that this expression is the exact same as this expression on the other side. And let's see what happens when that's the case. We're going to start by looking to distribute. We don't have to. Collect like terms. We don't have to. So now we get the variables on the same side. So minus 6x and minus 6x. And let's see what that results in. 6 minus 6 is nothing, so we're left with 3. 6 minus 6 is nothing, so we're left with 3. So we do still have a true statement. 3 is the same as 3. And what that means is that no matter what number is plugged in, this statement is true. This side of the equation will give you the same number as the other side of the equation. So with an infinitely many solutions, we are going to see a result of a number equaling itself. And one of the keys clues that we saw to this happening was that we had the same simplified expression on both sides. But real quick, what does it mean to have infinitely many solutions? It means that no matter what number I plug in, let's say it's a 1, we're going to get the exact same answer on the other side. 1 times 6 is 6 plus 3 is 9. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 3 is 9. We could take whatever number we want. Let's take a negative 2. Negative, uh, 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. Plus 3 is going to be a negative 9. And on the other side, we'll get negative 12 plus 3 and get negative 9 equal to negative 9. So no matter what number we choose to plug in for our x value, we're always going to result in a number equaling itself. A number equaling itself. Which means that every single number you could possibly think of to plug in for your x's, it's still going to make this statement true. Which is different from our very first case. Because here, there was only one number that would make this statement true. There was only a 4 that made this statement true. Because 6 times 4 plus 3 equals 5 times 4 plus 7. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 3 is 27. 5 times 4 is 20, and so we have 20 plus 7, and 20 plus 7 is 27. So it worked when it was a 4. However, it doesn't work when the number is not a 4. For example, let's say we try to experiment with x being 5. In this case, we do 6 times 5 plus 3 equals 5 times 5 plus 7. So in this case, we get 30 plus 3, which is 33. And on the other side, we get 25 plus 7, and 25 plus 7 is 32. And these are not equal. It does not work when we plug in a 5. In fact, it won't work for any other number except 4 in this case. So that's why it's one solution, whereas in this case, it's every single number. There's an infinity of numbers, so there's an infinity number of solutions. So here they are all compared together. One solution will have x equals a number. One of the keys to look for are different uh, variables on both sides of the equation when you've simplified the expressions on each side. Infinitely many solutions will result in a number equaling itself. 
and a key to these ha are when you have the same expression on both sides. No solutions will have a number equaling a different number. And one of the clues to look for are same number of variables on each side, but different constants. Let's look at three examples. So here, we're going to start with distributing, which we don't have to do, and we don't have to collect like terms. But we do have to get the variables on the same side, so we're going to subtract x from both sides. When that happens, we get a negative 1 equaling a 1. Well, that's a two different numbers being equal to each other, which is a sign for no solution. There's nothing that could be plugged in. No matter what number is plugged in, when you take one away from it, that's very different than adding one to it. Look, look here, we have some distribution that we're going to have to do. Uh, we do have to collect some like terms here, so that's actually a little bit of a mistake. We are going to collect some like terms to get to this step. So once we've simplified, oh, here's a big clue, 4m minus 12 equal to 4m minus 12. And when we do our step to get variables on one side, we get the number equal to itself, which is a sign that we've got infinitely many solutions. Notice that I'm following the, the same steps that I would follow um, solving even one solution problems. Let's do one more example here. I've got a distribute. Uh, I don't have to collect like terms, but when I get the variable, and notice that here's a clue. Same number of variables on both sides, but with different constants, a negative 5 versus a negative 10. And we end up getting negative 5 equaling to negative 10, which isn't true. So this is a case where we have no solutions. All right. Good luck on, the, on the, this topic, guys. And uh, I'll see you in class.